Uh, today's khatir is just going to be a reminder about some of the main timings that we should be making dua. This is the month of dua. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam encouraged us to make dua at specific timings. Today we'll mention five of them. Firstly, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam reminded us that on every Friday, and today is Friday, on every Friday there is an hour that if anybody makes dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to that person. And our scholars have differed when that hour is. The majority say that it is between Asr and Maghrib. So for today it's already gone, but next Friday, between Asr and Maghrib is the most precious time to make dua during the week. So we should emphasize this. Time number two, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَيْنَ كُلِّ أَذَانٍ وَإِقَامَةٍ دُعَاءٍ Between every adhan and iqama, there is time for dua. That our the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the dua between the adhan and the iqama is not rejected or rarely rejected. So people come early to the masjid, they sit down and they're waiting for the salah. This is the ideal time to make dua between the adhan and the iqama. Before the prayer starts, this is a very blessed time when you're in the masjid, you're waiting for the salah. Don't just let the time go by, raise your hands up and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time number three, in the salah itself, there are a number of opportunities where we are encouraged to make dua. And most prominent amongst them is in the sajda and before the salam and after the salam. In the whole salah, we can make dua, the dhikr, tasbih, but in particular while we are in sajda, and before we say the taslim, and then after the taslim, when we do our dhikr, these are all blessed timings. And of these, the most blessed time is in the sajda. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونَ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ فَقَمِنٌ أَنْ يُسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ The closest that anybody will ever be to his Lord is when he is in sajda. When you are in sajda, that is the closest you will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, he said, increase your dua in your sajda, for indeed the chances of acceptance are high during sajda. So when we fall into sajda, then we increase our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask of this world and of the next world, and we ask whatever we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the position that I have and the position of my teachers and many classical scholars that once we have done the adhkar in Arabic, after that, one may make dua in any language, in any salah. Because what is restricted in Arabic is the Quran and the adhkar of salah. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al-Azim, Allahu Akbar, that must be done in Arabic. Other than this, once you have said Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, as much as you should, after that, you may make dua in any language for the needs of this world and the next, even if it is in the fard salah. Because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not say only make dua in Arabic, dua is done in any language and this dua is not a part of salah, therefore it will not matter what language it is done in. So dua should be done in sajda and before the taslim and after the taslim, these are all blessed timings. Time number four of making dua. The Prophet sallallahu said, three are the duas that are rarely rejected and one of them he said, الصائم إذا أفطر The one who's fasting at the time of iftar when he's about to break the fast these duas are never rejected so these days every single day we have a gift given to us of a free dua time every day when it's time for iftar and we sit down that is a precious time do not waste it in idle chat do not waste it in talking about politics and ghibah and namibah and what not that is the most precious time of our day during these days of Ramadan right before the iftar when we sit down, it is time for dhikr and time for dua. So make dua before the iftar, before we eat the iftar, before the date is raised to our mouth. The last few minutes, if we can concentrate on Allah rather than the plate of food in front of us. If we can make dua to Allah, our Prophet ﷺ said, three are the duas never rejected. And one of them, the sa'im, when he's about to break the fast. And the five, fifth and final one for today, and of course there are many other timings, but we're going to short khatara today. The fifth and final one of the most powerful duas, perhaps one of the most powerful of all, is the dua of Laylatul Qadr. And that is why we're supposed to be making dua on Laylatul Qadr. Because the e efficiency of that dua, the power of that dua, cannot be replicated throughout the year. And that is why on Laylatul 
Laylatul Qadr, we are supposed to spend the whole night making dua to Allah and doing dhikr and reading Quran because that Laylatul Qadr dua is equivalent to the dua of an entire lifetime. 83 years of constant dua, we will get it instantaneously. And that's why Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, what dua should I make? Because she's making dua. She's making dua the whole night. And so the Prophet taught her one dua, Allahumma inna ka'afoon tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. But in reality, any and every dua should be made on Laylatul Qadr because it is the night of decree. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, nothing changes Qadr other than dua. Nothing changes Qadr other than dua. On that night, we can change Qadr through our dua. And so we make dua to Allah to bless us with the good of this world and the next, to give us good health, long life, good wealth, blessed wealth, to make sure that we live righteous lives. Our children are of those who practice Islam. That's the night of dua, Laylatul Qadr. These are the five timings that I remind myself and all of us to constantly make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua in this month.